Hey Mark Nelson. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Broken Nose Media. Thank you. How's things? They're all right. All Pretty right. tired, but um, apart from that, quite good. Good spirits. Good, good. But first of all, congratulations on winning Best Headliner at the <laughs> Scottish <laughs> Comedy Awards this thank year. Thank you, thank you very much. Did, was there like a ceremony for that? Or? Yeah, there was, um, there was uh, it was on Monday night, uh, and I went, because I've, I've never been to it before, the Scottish Comedy Awards, because I, I won Best Headliner last year as well. And then I'd never been it before, so I thought I'd, I'd, I would go along. But but I had a show that night as well because it was a Monday night, so I was only there for the start. And then I presented an award, and then I got an award, and then I just basically had to oh. run out the building. It's pretty show sure, So yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight <laughs> a the black hack to the. Did you get the award and then go to your show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Plus uh, the show that I was doing was the show you saw with Kier, mm -hmm. and Kier had won an award as well, so I got to take both awards along and go. Well, that must have felt pretty good starting the gig because you've just won awards. It was, it was quite, it was quite <laughs> weird. Yeah, it was. It was a, a nice, a nice kind of, a nice surprise. Nice. Yeah, really delighted. Nice yeah. one. Uh, so recently you've done a BBC Scotland video as mm -hmm. part of their Short Stuff series mm -hmm. with your daughter mm -hmm. as a sort of comedy video. Yep. Um, here's a clip from it. I can't watch this, it's so depressing. There's benefit cuts all the time. How do we get ourselves into this mess? I want a bag of crap. Yeah, but how are we supposed to get the money back without cutting benefits? Tax Goodall! Okay, we could, we could tax. Okay. And Starbucks! And Starbucks, and Starbucks. Yellow bankers! I thought it was really funny, by the way. I've oh, thank you, times. thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, it went kind of mental. It started off, I used to do a lot of wee kind of things with my daughter. It was, it was mostly just Facebook posts, and it started off with me. She's got these kind of plastic letters that she can stick up in the bath. And I started putting these messages up as if she'd left them, so it was like death to the west and stuff like that. And then uh, it was my agent that kind of said we should do something with this, and then we never really knew. And then uh, guy Keith Martin, on BBC, was doing these shorts, and he came to me and says, "I'd love you to do these shorts. Could you part? Could you?" So I gave him over a load of ideas about various kind of things we were going to do, and then uh, we we wanted to do this with my daughter. And the initial idea was it was going to be like a, a newscast with us being co-anchors and me being straight and her just talking nonsense. Mm -hmm. But it just, logistically, it was just a nightmare to film because trying to get the two of us together and you can't really give her lines. Yeah. So, so I ended up doing where it was just the two of us. Because uh, I've, I've always, I've always had, I've always been, had an idea of what like dads just do with kids during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's basically what my day is. So, um, so yeah, we'd come up with the idea that it was just us watching the news and I was going to be a bit dumber and not really know what was going on. <laughs> and then she'd come out with these really salient political points. Uh, tax um, Google. Yeah, yeah. It was That's weird. Right. It was so weird. We um, we went to Jojo Sullivan's uh, 50th birthday party uh, two weeks ago and um, Isla, my daughter, came along as well. And she got recognised. Really? Which was really like, like uh, there's a girl that was uh, friends with Jojo's daughter. And I'm like, oh my God, that's the, <laughs> that's the jail the bankers kid. Get rid of Trident. You're obsessed with Trident, you know that? It's too much too much. Oh, really? Well, how much? One hundred barely a pound. Okay then, if you're so smart, what would you do with the money? Bow schools and toss the tools. Good point. <laughs> yeah, so it's it quite funny. I love that lady. Like, that was schools. Yeah, I with all yeah, those. yeah. She did. I mean, it was, it was fun filming it, mm -hmm. but it's it's probably the most frustrating thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> really? Because just, just having to get our because you basically just tell her things to say. Yeah, like through the lines. Yeah, and then you try and work out what she can say, and then you'll you'll only get our attention for about two minutes. So you need to make sure she gets to say them in those two minutes because after that she just starts talking gibberish, <laughs> talking about her day and like stuff like that. Yeah, 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 stuff. yeah, yeah. So, but it, it was good fun. It was really good fun. Nice really one. Fun. So is that something you want to do more of, those kind of short videos? Hopefully. Hopefully we're going to do more of them. There's a lot of stuff we can, uh, we can talk about, like the Scottish election and the European referendum. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm hoping we can get more done. I wanted to do a, I wanted to do a one on ISIS, but 
uh, my wife won't let me. <laughs> I don't really want. That's fair I enough. I really want death threats getting <laughs> sent to the house. So. Nice. Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I saw a tweet that you'd mentioned that in mm -hmm. about season two. I've just finished season one and I've watched a couple of episodes of season mm -hmm. two. What do you think of season one? I liked it a lot. I didn't. I didn't really know. I really know what to expect from it because I like I like the comic films. I'm never really that into comic books, but I really like the films, uh, and I've I've loved the Marvel films. Mm -hmm. So when they were making a TV show, and I was kind of going, nah, I don't know whether it'll be any good. And then I was really pleasantly surprised at how gritty it was and like yeah. how violent. Yeah, it's pretty and violent. It was good, and I think the guy that plays Daredevil was brilliant. What did you think of Daredevil's like black ninja costume compared to his like actual red and? Eh. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think, I think the costume's quite cool. I don't really, I don't really, there's no need for the horns. <laughs> the horns don't really add anything like to it whatsoever. Like that box coat. I saw you play the festival club at the stand mm -hmm. during the Glasgow Comedy Festival. You were headlining that night. And it was absolutely brilliant. Oh, like, thank you. You just totally killed thank it. Like, thank you, man. And it was like a total, it was a sellout crowd as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the the same night um, Abigailia was on. Yes, as well. Yes, yeah, because we'd big gig the night before as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I loved that. That was that point. You also had the solo show at the comedy festival called Mark Nelson. Yeah. How did that go? That was good. That was just before the late show. It oh was, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I did. Uh, I think I did that, and then I ran off and did another gig, and then came back to the stand to the late show. But the social was brilliant. It's the best best social I've done um, during during Glasgow. Definitely, mm. it was fantastic. Just like sold out, and um, yeah, just a really, really, really good audience this year. Just like right from the start, just because I had the the Mickey Bartlett, the Northern Irish comic. Mm. Uh, he was opening for me. And as soon as I, as soon as he went on, you were just like, "This is this is fantastic!" Like he just ripped it, and then so, and at that kind of point, you go, "Shit!" You know, like, <laughs> did a bit too well, and then, uh, <laughs> and then bring it back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then so yeah, so you kind of hope, but then yeah, it just carried it all through, and it was yeah, it was a brilliant show, brilliant show. The late show was good that night as well. Mm. That was a good show. Yeah, no, that yeah, was yeah, a, yeah, that was, that good. was a good show. Yeah, yeah, I liked it because they can be they can be mental those shows. The Friday, the Friday night ones tend to be a bit more mental than the Saturday night ones. Really? Aye. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's the same with gigs. Friday night gigs are always a wee bit more... I think it's like people coming out from work after. No, it's a bit whereas, tired, a bit aye, drunk. Whereas Saturday night, a lot of couples. Who's your best friend in comedy? Other than your daughter. Oof. Um, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a lot of really good friends. Um, who my best friend is? Wow. Uh, Hard hitting know. questions. Yeah, I can't, because I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't leave people out. I'm, I'm, I'm friends. The, the good thing about comedy is there's very few, very few people you don't get on with. A lot of people kind of say to you, oh, is it like kind of backstabbing and all that kind of stuff? And like, I'd say there's about, you only meet about 3% of people are arseholes in comedy. And I've worked in offices. And it's 50 50 easily, <laughs> you know, like that. Nice. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. the comedians are very, very nice and very supportive of each other, and they're, they're good laugh, like, as well, because you're all in the same situation a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, I've got like Keir McAllister, one of my best friends. Keir's a very nice man, he is a very nice man, yes. I almost worked him a few times, but he doesn't look very nice. He's man. very, very, very funny as well, very talented. Yeah. Yes, I will have a question related to Kieran McAllister later on. Ah, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> hey, so you're writing for your new show, the Edinburgh Fringe mm -hmm. Festival, called Smiley Face. Yes. I've already got tickets to see I'll it. I'll go. Um, how's the writing going for that? It's all right. Yeah, not too bad. Um, a lot better than other Edinburgh years have gone. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's actually going okay. Um, I'm looking forward to it this year. Um it's just a, like I've got a lot more previews this year than I've ever had before. Um, it's really tough to preview up here. Like if you're in London, you can basically find a preview every night if you want. Yeah. And Scotland hasn't really taken to the preview. I mean, we we do them every year. Me, uh, Daniel Sloss, and Kai Humphreys do them every year uh, at uh, like Livingston, an art centre in Livingston, and uh, we do one in Kilmarnock. 
and it's taken a, a while to build up that audience so they come back knowing exactly what the show is going to be like but mm. try to do ones in Glasgow just and audiences just aren't used to it so they kind of come along and go why why is this shit you know like you know what i mean yeah. like i know i've only paid two quid but why is yeah, yeah why is that guy, why is the guy got a book on stage and all that so it's like the stand advertised them like a month or two in advance yeah they can advertise them as like full shows yeah yeah it does seem strange but i mean i think there's a market for it um i saw uh, phil nickel and tony law do a preview this year and it was like a total riot like mm. it, it was not prepared at all but it was really funny yeah yeah because yeah of see, that, that's, you that, get that's, loads of mad things come out see of it. i like that that's what's nice about it like, yeah it's so. not like they haven't been saying this, these same jokes for yeah yeah it was really it was really good because i that. think i think there is a danger as well about um i was talking to fred mccauley about this and he was saying that you never had previews in when when you started doing edinburgh festival it was always just you went to edinburgh with some, some ideas and you worked out a show during the fringe and then after the, the end you had a show that you could tour and that was the way it worked mm -hmm. and it was nice for the audiences because they were getting to see a show formed while they were at the fringe yeah <clears throat> and uh it was just more experimental and also it was fresher because i don't like I, I i'm very wary of doing too many previews because i don't want to get sick of stuff because <laughs> you're still going to be doing it for 28 nights in edinburgh yeah so if you've already done 40 nights of that stuff beforehand you're kind of going jesus man this is you know what i mean once you get to edinburgh you don't want to seem bored of it and like mm. going through the mill again and again and again so does that ever happen during a run of shows at edinburgh where you're like oh i need this fucking joke again or... oh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> i mean there's some nights that are just the thing about edinburgh edinburgh surprises you all the time because the, the weekends the weekends you can always kind of count on as being good and then there'll be shows that will really surprise you. You know, you'll have like a Monday night show and it'll only be half full and it's raining and really pissing down and then that suddenly turns out to be the best show of the whole run just because nice. the way the audience have... Sometimes I've noticed queens will say like something and have a laugh to themselves and say, oh, some things are just for me. Yeah. Is that so they don't like lose their mind just doing the exact same thing? I think so, yeah. Every time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> aye, aye, definitely. Aye, that, that is nice. It's nice to do wee jokes that you think are funny, but you kind of know nobody else does. <laughs> um, so, you studied politics at Glasgow, mm -hmm. uh, and you, you now you're doing a political comedy show called Topical Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's monthly at the stand Edinburgh and Glasgow. Yep. And you're also doing it at the Edinburgh Fringe this yeah, year. Yeah, we're doing a full run at the Fringe. Yeah. What is that show, and who is in it? It is a show where it started off from uh, Keir McAllister and Vladimir McTavish did a show about the Scottish referendum and the upcoming Scottish referendum. And uh, it was a show where they would, they would uh, it was almost like a double act where they'd go on and they'd tell jokes about the referendum, tell jokes about Scottish politics, um, show videos. Uh, and then they started getting guests on to do a uh, political humour and I've, I've guessed on it quite a few times and then after we did the last show I think the night before the referendum were you on that show yeah that was the I was at that show at the stand and that was the first time I saw you live aye that was that was a good show that was, that was and a it was quite an, quite an emotional kind of show because it was the last time they'd ever do it and it was yeah i remember the wrap-up everyone was on stage and i think Keir and vlad said oh no matter what you're voting you know let's all just ah fuck it everyone vote yes yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so so yeah it came and then after that we discussed it and i kind of said because i'd always wanted to do a topical kind of show and then we decided well we've got an election, a general election coming up, so let's do stuff for that. Uh, and and then after that, we, we've now decided to do this, uh, keep going it monthly and try and get more topical stuff going. Nice. Uh, so that's you, Kieran McAllister. Yeah, I, Vladimir McTavish and Stuart Murphy does it Stuart now Murphy. as well. Yeah. It's quite, so it's a nice, we've, we've toyed about with the, the format quite a lot to find out like it initially started with one of us hosting it and coming on and telling gags at the start and it was <clears throat> it was tough because when you're coming out to that kind of that kind of show just telling topical gags because you've got to remember a lot of audiences aren't as 
because we're writing a show, we're we are like across everything in terms of what's happening in news, and most of the time audiences aren't. Because yeah, so if, if a pig has sex in the background of Willie Rennie, you know about it like two yes, minutes after exactly, it's exactly. <laughs> But if Angela Merkel does something to piss off the Chinese, people might not know that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like you need to you need to be aware of that. Uh, because just because the society, like people don't people people have got too much to do to, to concentrate on everything that happens in the news so we were doing jokes and then some of them weren't landing because we were alright you don't know that story and then and then it's kind of evolved and uh, we found that the nicest format of it was us just all sitting talking almost like a podcast mm-hmm. but live on stage yeah. and that's why we got Stuart in because we needed someone to kind of hold it together um, because it was getting a bit you know we're going off and too many tangents so we needed we needed a kind of focal person mm-hmm. to just keep it as a chairperson and then allow the three of us to just yeah nice talk about the news because before that it was so that's how you voted you did yeah. that at the fringe last year I, I was at the show where Kezia Dugdale the oh, where you Scottish that, Labour leader that infamous Kezia was in show. the crowd uh, yeah she hated it yeah well she, she was just like disinterested I think because I was sitting at the other side of the stage but I, I was looking like basically where she was looking so I, I was like oh yeah it's Kezia and then she was like yeah it was a tough crowd oh she hated it I've, still not, I've never read her a review of it um, because I didn't know she reviewed it and then but it, it was I think it was I can't remember what paper it was for but you had to pay for it I was like, I'm not paying to read someone slag me off. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, she didn't. She didn't like it at all. Because Keir did, um, Keir did the warm-up for the one of the leaders' debates. Oh, yeah? And she was the only one of the leaders that wouldn't speak to him. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, wow. But Potential next leader. Well, well I mean, yeah, not really. But. Not really. 